as leaders, what are the consistent practices that we could, that we own, not what we're told to do, but we develop these together that we feel passionate about is our job as leaders to move the system. That, that if we model those kinds of practices, those behaviors as leadership practices and help our systems slowly but surely model those, we will move the whole system. That's what they're working on. So in the totems, taboos, and repetitive interactions, very quickly, the reason on the Enneagram, it's at the level of principles, correct? You'll find it, T-T-R-I. So you use it, it's only used in one place on the Enneagram, which is to take values, high level values that a group would have, and create them into operational principles. So transparency is a high level value, right? How do you operationalize that into practice? This is the process that you would utilize to do that. So you can start off with a high level value or a high level statement of the principle at the top. And the reason why you've even chosen to do this is that you, you believe that if we together as a group of, let's say in our case, as leaders of a system, if our behavior, if we walked our talk if we believe that some consistent practice in our behavior was critical to break some dynamics in our culture and move them from one way of operating to a more powerful way of operating, you would go through this exercise. You want to do three steps and you want to do them in a particular sequence. And it's not the way you think. You would normally think you'd start with totems. No, you start with repetitive behaviors and you work in the opposite direction. And the reason why is you want, to, you want to articulate what is it we're going to do differently that models this, this high level principle. That if anybody saw that, they would, they would say those behaviors, they're walking their talk around transparency or in the case of this group, it's about demonstrating that we're totally committed to learning growing and changing. We're excited as leaders. People would say, my God, this leadership team, that is, they're all over that. Everything they do speaks volumes about learning, growing, changing, adapting. They should never have to tell people in their district that that's <laughs> important. People should be able to give them, should, should be able to say that about them because of their behaviors. And you say, well, what behaviors would people see that would lead them to conclude that principle? Totems, taboos, and repetitive interactions is not a set of charts that you then go talk to people about. It's a set of agreements about the people that are sitting around the table developing them. Another huge pitfall. It's not about other people's behaviors. So really commonly, it's, you end up hearing about what teachers should be doing. And I go, are you all a bunch of teachers? They go, no, no, no. So what are you, who are you talking about? <laughs> you can only agree among yourselves. You can't get another group of people to agree. Then it's just about compliance. That's the old model. The behaviors should be crystal clear. Here's the test. That anybody having heard one of these descriptions of behavior would go, I know exactly what I would be asked to be doing if I was part of that group. It shouldn't be like fuzzy. Do you have any ambiguity that within 48 hours we would, would, would respond to a request and we would acknowledge having received the request and kind of like the steps and timelines and when we're going to get back to you with the answer. Or to say, we don't have any of that input, but somehow that was the commitment. Is that clear to you? If you were to become part of that team, would you know what you were doing? It's clear. That's your criterion that you're looking for. It's crystal clear that anybody would understand the specificity. Because a lot of times people come up here and they'll go, let's make one up, transparency. Um, it could have been, 
We agree to respond to all stakeholder requests. They're probably already think they're doing that now, right? But not their clients don't think they're doing it. It's not crystal clear. It's like a what and a, and a frequency or a time frame. It's very specific. This better be worth doing. You know, these totems and you better believe that by modeling that, you're really going to break a culture and to create a new culture. Does that make sense, what these are? What are the taboos? The taboos, to be honest with you, are typically things that people are already doing in the system with good intentions, but it actually violates living the principle of transparency. A, a taboo would be, in the urgency of the moment, we skipped our process. That's a taboo. Because the first time you do that, the whole thing's out the window, isn't it? People, that's what they're going to remember. Did they live it or not? So taboos actually violate the principle. Totems, they're quantifiable results. They're evidence of success. Look, if you are going to, these, that's why this is not such an easy process. These are things you're going to commit to do in the ways of being. These are actually ways of being. These are people strategies, not programmatic strategies. On the Enneagram, principles are strategies about how people are going to be. And the strategies on the left side of the Enneagram are what we're going to do, like programmatically. So that's a different thing, right? So these are a way of thinking about it. What's going to make this worthwhile doing? What is it we hope to actually accomplish by doing these behaviors repetitively and eliminating these taboos to the best of our human ability? You're doing it because you expect to see certain results. We should see, see our ultimate costs of projects go down because people are online, we have all the good ideas, we hit deadlines. So if we do these behaviors, and we stop doing the taboos, we'll see some results. Does that make sense? The more positive results we see, the more reinforcement they'll do to more positive behaviors and eliminate the negative behaviors and the greater results we'll see. It's a reinforcing positive loop. The reality is right now in their system, in that system and in this system, there are already these positive evidences of success. But because we're focused on the negative, we're not seeing them. They're already great things that are happening, but when you get explicit about it, people start seeing it and will connect it to these positive behaviors. They'll, it's, they'll want to do those positive. This, you know how you decide to buy a new car? and you're going to buy this particular car and you picked out the color and you don't see it anywhere and then all of a sudden it's everywhere. <laughs> That's what this process is like. It's making some conscious decisions. You, it's also another way of saying you create your reality. It's being clear on what's the reality that you want to live as a team of people. It becomes very powerful. <laughs> It's a virtual positive cycle, spiraling cycle, as, a pers as opposed to a vicious cycle downwards, negative cycle. So it's a positive expanding loop. It's the cultural piece. How you change culture is, is you get clear on what's the culture you want and you live it as if it already exists. That's how you change culture. <laughs>